What's up, DMD family? Welcome back to another Discs MD video. And today we're out doing some field work. So let's loosen up the arm and get ready to throw some. Roll the intro. All right, everybody, welcome back to another video in the Improve My Game and we're Improving My Game series. Before we get started, uh, if you can do me a favor, go ahead and hit the subscribe, hit the like, hit the notifications. Uh, thanks so much for all the support. The last iteration of this video that I did, over 300 views already. I think we're pushing 320. So, but I still only have 51 subscribers. How does that work? So if you're watching this video, just go ahead and click the subscribe. It's pretty easy and it helps me out. Uh, helps the channel out so I can keep making content. So, all right, so let's get started. I'm going to try to do two things today. Uh, one, one is uh, I'm going to try the grip it and rip it method that Robbie C had in his last video. I'll put the link to that in the description below. Uh, you really should probably go over there and check that out. Um, I found it um, very useful. So what's happening with me is oftentimes when I come through on my backhand, I, I let go of the disc, uh, which tends to make it go right early instead of gripping it tight and letting the disc rip out of my grip, um, which is what Robbie C and his coach have been working on with him. I want to try it. I want to see, I want to grip it as hard as I can and just let the disc rip out of my hand. So that's one thing I'm going to be working on today. The other thing is just, uh, the reiteration of my last Improving My Game video and getting to my three points uh, of my backhand form how I want to. So I'm just going to film a bunch of me throwing the disc. Let's get rolling. So here we go. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm using Paul Yolaberry's method of gripping um, disc in line with your hand, squeezing the middle two fingers, wrapping the index finger, and laying the thumb on top. Right? That's the grip I'm using. Uh, I'm going to death grip it as I'm doing this and my walk up is going to be slow uh, just so I can hit my three different points of my backhand form and uh, everything that I'm using is going to be extremely overstable and I'm going to have a side view and I'm going to have a back view uh, to help it help me analyze what I'm doing slow it down and you know do all that good jazz so I can see what I need to improve so let's just throw you know 10 or 15 and see how it goes and I'll sort of talk through them as I go. All right, throwing a cap wrap on this one, really overstable. This, <laughs> this wind has turned from a gentle breeze into a very stiff headwind. So this might go bad quickly. Wow, that felt great. Really low, so I need to stand up more, but gripping up like that. That felt great. All right, so we're gonna throw a Firebird now. Get my grip right, slow, high in the air. That came out nice too. Uh, this feels great. Really holding on to it and gripping it hard and letting it rip out of my hand feels great. Robbie C, where have you been? Oh, I turned that one over. Grip lock a little bit, and that's what he said. There'll be times when you hold on to it because you're holding it so fast, so, uh, holding on to it so hard, and that's what that did. But uh, still, feels really good. These are going good. Uh, I want. I'm interested to slow slow it down and see how my power pocket is. Okay, so I've been turning my ballista over for some reason. I think it's getting beat in. That was a bomb. So I'm going to put that one on a little more hyzer. Let's try again. So this is my catalyst. Get my grip. Death grip. Slow walk up. Turning that one over too. That was low. Okay. All right, let me go get those and we'll try this again. All right, to my observant viewers, uh, you'll notice the wardrobe change in my video. And I thought I 
videoed this explanation over there when I was throwing, but apparently my phone didn't record it, so we're doing it again. Um, my mic died halfway through my first session. When I was going to edit, I realized that the mic was that the mic had cut out on me. So um, I had to do a second session uh, to video again the second half of the video that I wanted to give you. Gotta love the motorcycles out for it's a gorgeous day. Anyway, I needed to refilm the second half of the video I wanted to give you. Um, so that's what the wardrobe change is all about. And I realized that Iceberg TV has since put out a video uh, on Robbie C's Grip It and Rip It uh, or Gripping Hard. I have intentionally not watched that video yet. I do watch Iceberg TV stuff, but I have purposely not watched that one yet until I video mine, so I'm not influenced by him uh, to give you my um, raw uh, opinion on what Robbie C does. So let's get back to throwing some discs out at the uh, field. All right, here we go. I'm going to try to call out what I throw as I throw it. Throw my catalyst first. little low felt good need to cradle my wrist more get my hit point right okay that was it's coming out correctly it's just not coming out as fast focus on holding and hit my points also I'm in a tailwind today And I gotta get that up in the air. Okay, this round may be a practice, warm up round. Okay, let's go clean them up. So um, after that last round, I know some would probably be tempted to cut that round out and not include it in the video, just because my, uh, at my release, nose up, nose down was terrible. Everything else felt really good though, and when I went to clean those up, except for the cat wrap, which I re released really low, they were all within 40 feet of each other. An unintended consequence, and if you saw my last video on this, of me doing my three stages and now focusing on gripping the disc really hard, is accuracy. Like, I feel like the disc is coming out exactly where I want it to come out now. Um, so that's a great thing. Uh, more than distance for me because you know I'm 50 years old I, I'm not going to throw 500 feet ever if I get to 400 feet awesome but um, if I'm throwing 350 consistently that's that's good for me uh, just an average player 50 years old I, I want to be at 350 consistently so more importantly to me is accuracy and what I'm doing right now I think is helping my accuracy a lot so I'm going to throw uh, one more round and then uh, I'll wrap it all up. Uh, I switch. I switched the force out for my ballista just because I'm in a tailwind now. I had to do that because of the sun. Um, and your viewing pleasure, because if I was the other way, it would be backlit, backlit like crazy. Um, so I'm going to throw one more round. Uh, ballista, uh, Firebird, Thunderbird, Catalyst, and a cab wrap, and then I, we'll wrap it up. All right, the ballista first. Really grip it hard and make sure my three points. And low again. Okay. I'm not standing up. I must be bending over when I'm releasing. I'm going to, I'll figure that out. I have another camera set up over here. <laughs> I'll figure that out when I go to analyze it. Yeah, that's better. Oh, that's my five. And yeah, because of the tail wind, <laughs> these things are pretty overstable and I don't have the arm speed yet. I'm getting there. Oh, also. I forgot my, between sessions, I forgot my grip. I got to get my grip right too. As well as gripping it hard, I got to put it in my hand right. That was my Thunderbird. And these feel great. And they're coming out right where I want them to. Up and down, I'll work on that. But right now, they're coming out in the trajectory and with the force I want to. So... Catalyst, that was, yeah, that was the throw. Height and everything. So, last in is cap wrap. Really grip this. Get my three points. Ah, yeah. 
that felt great. Crazy cable, cat wrap, but I'll go clean them up. We'll come back and talk a little bit. All right, y'all, wrap it up. That session was, if my Ballista release would have been higher, so it would have gone farther, these four, my Ballista, my Cat Wrap, my Thunderbird, and my Firebird, would have been within 10 feet of each other. 10 feet of each other. Now my Catalyst is a little less overstable. It's a little bit understable. Uh, it's probably more stable. But that one was more left just because it flips up more. But the stable ones, we're all within 10 feet of each other. That's crazy. The accuracy of doing all this is really showing to me, which is I, I, I prefer accuracy over distance, um, quite honestly. And that's what I teach my athletes in softball. Sacrifice speed for accuracy. Because if you can't hit the glove, you can't get anybody out, right? So take a little bit off the throw to get the accuracy. And I'm not taking anything off the throw when the accuracy is there. So my arm speed is just not up to par. And as I speed up, you'll, um, as I speed up my run up, uh, and as I get my hip timing and all that incorporated, because right now I'm just worried about hitting here, here, and here, um, and coordinating that with my X step. I'm not getting my right side into it all. I'm not getting the hip turn in that I want. So as I am able to incorporate all that, I can see my distance jumping up. So, um, Thanks a lot to Robbie C. I really like the heart, the death grip, the grip and rip method. Uh, I think it works for me. Uh, go over to his channel again. The link is in, in the description below. There is a warning from Mike Strauss on this, and I, I think it's a good warning uh, to not just do this willy-nilly. Uh, I've been really focusing on my form. I'm uh, in the academy with Paul Yulaberry, so I have coaching from him, not one-on-one, -on -one, but videos. So I do a lot of researching in disc golf and form and what works and what doesn't work. And I'm really in tune with the way my body functions and the way I throw. So I felt comfortable doing this without a coach. Uh, I can see as I progress, maybe next season grabbing a coach. I just can't afford it right now. But uh, as I can, I want to get a coach. But he warned you, don't just willy-nilly do this. Uh, be really in tune with your game and your technique and your form. Uh, and the way your body moves, uh, either that or get a coach. Um, so uh, again, I'm all for this. I think it works great for me. Might not be for everybody. I'll see what Iceberg says about it, but uh, that's that's all I have to say about it. And I hope this video helps you a little bit, uh, gives you insight to what I'm doing, and gives you ideas for what you can do. Mm -hmm.